Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to Fridays with Sandy. We have a really interesting candidate uh, who Sandy will handicap. Her name is Victoria. Her target schools are Chicago Booth, Michigan Ross, Kellogg, and IE Business School in Spain. She's got some good GRE scores, 167 verbal uh, and 166 quant. Uh, I just posted the latest GRE scores at Wharton and uh, Victoria scores beat Wharton averages very easily. Yeah. Sandy, what do you think? Let me, let me interrupt here. Victoria, yes. how do you pronounce your last name? Selakeen, but you can pronounce it however you feel like. Uh, I'm just going to call you Victoria. Is that uh, hi Hispanic origin? Uh, it's not. My father is from Bangladesh. Okay. Because I notice you have a lot of Spanish on your resume, Spanish competencies, and you want to work in a Spanish country. Yes. I studied Spanish in undergrad and fell in love with the language, the literature um, in Spain and Latin American countries. Uh, yeah, okay. That's, gr that's great for every purpose except this. Let me, let me cut to the chase and give you some tough love. Uh, I, I've read your resume. I've read your statement of purpose here. You've you got to get your game face on. You're coming off as someone who wants to continue their undergraduate education and you know you said your long-term goal is to help people uh, long term I would like to use analytics to achieve social good and buy-in from the <coughs> private sector yeah John otherwise she can't say that uh, why I'm not sure Do I need to be more specific, like something like social yeah. impact investing? You really need to say I'm interested in this industry. You, you go. A specific industry. Yeah. And the analytics part is real good. You, you're, you're, you've got a lot going for you. You're a woman in STEM. That's very powerful. You've got uh, three seven uh, undergraduate. GR, uh, uh, GPA, your, your GRE scores are in the 97th verbal, 93rd quant. <clears throat> That's okay for almost every school. Uh, your weakness is that your, your job pedigrees are not from super selective places. <clears throat> and one of the things you should do on your resume you say actuarial analyst at the Auto Club Group. That's the AAA of Dearborn, Michigan. What does that mean? AAA. AAA, I know. But do you work for the home office or? Yes, headquarters. So AAA is actually comprised of smaller um, clubs. And we're the main one that handles. Right. You got to say that you work at headquarters. <clears throat> and according to what you've listed in the bullets, you do more than, is actuarial analyst, is that your official title or is that what you're calling yourself? That's my official title, but I do more than the. You do, right. That, but you, you've got to indicate that very quickly. You know, you go, you should put a squib in there. You know, in my actuarial title, as analyst title role, I do a number of other things, including this, this, this. Okay. And then, list the bullets. What, what you need is a squib that, and, and I keep saying this to a lot of people, you need a squib that introduces us to the bullets. You just start off here by saying actuarial analyst, model loss, model loss cost to find loss predicting variables. Whew. Too technical? Yeah, you're too much yeah. into weeds. Okay. Be a little bit uh, higher up there, uh, conceptually, okay. you know. Predicting and loss. You get, right. And, and you got to get your game face on and show us but that how your current job is a platform for the next job you want. Okay, so this is critical. What, what's the next job you want? Consulting. Gen general strategic consulting? 
Yes, or management consulting. The same thing, yeah. Management consulting, general strategic consulting. You, you got to say that right out. You go, I, I've, what I've been doing, here's the way you present yourself. What I've been doing is serving a, a kind of um, consultant role within the home office of the AAA. And a lot of that has been um, doing consulting projects that deal with my uh, actuarial background. So I want to transition from a specialized consultant at AAA to being a general consultant. Do you have that picture now? Yes. Okay. And that's the way you have to describe your jobs. And that's the way you, you need to, to, to describe the bullets. Yeah, you use, the words, use the words data analytics. Okay. Yeah, no, the, the data, big data, all that stuff is great. People love it. They love women in STEM. You got a lot going for you. Thank you. If, if, now, is that something that I phrase differently um, and in a non-technical way in my, my resume, or is that something that I emphasize more in essays? Every place. Okay. Yeah, you got to take the lingo out of it. You believe me, they're, they're, you, you can't hide from being a STEM actuarial type. Okay. They'll know that, and it's good. And and you were a math minor, uh, and and your title is actuarial analyst. Okay, go with that. That's okay. a that's that's a that can be a plus, if you say, yeah, my title is actuarial analyst, but I do more than that. That's what that's the secret sauce for you. Thank you, Victoria. Do you manage anyone? No, I don't. Do you work in a team? Yes. Okay. Yeah. John, John will tell you how to do this. That's helpful to, to, to mention that you work in a team and whether you enjoy it and, and what contribution you've made and what you've learned from that experience in some way. Okay. I mean, the other thing here is you made a mention to me earlier that you had moved to research by choice. Um, research, dirty word in your business. Yes. School. Exactly. It's research. Yeah. So it, it's called research here, but it's not actually research. It's not like academic research whatsoever. Um, it's demand models. So it's still definitely related to business. You want to stress working with and through other people. Okay. Yeah. And th that's the secret formula. You could state it in a million different ways. You, you want to say that what I really enjoy about this job is how my actuarial background at the AAA brings me in touch with teams, other parts of the company, strategic innovations of the company, working with and through other people on projects and teams. They don't want some, somebody yeah. with a green eye shade in the corner. Yeah. You, the, the, the word research brings to mind a loner in the back room, which yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah. be. Weirdo, right. <laughs> what, what, okay, what about Victoria's extras? She was uh, uh, on the Varsity uh, Equestrian tr Team. Yep. So I rode horses for, well, I rode horses before college, but I rode all four years on the equestrian team. Um, well, that's I'm impressed. year-round sport you try out every year. I'm impressed. You might, you might find someone on the AdCom, and there are a number of them since people on the AdCom are frequently women from horsey backgrounds. So you might find someone. Another horse person. And you know, horse people stick together, horse Sandy. Horse people stick together. They right? really do. Horse sense, right. <laughs> so, and, and, and also, what else did you do in your extras? Um, I had a season of track. I had to stop because of an injury. Um, I spent a summer as a mentor for a Suwannee Bridge program. I think bridge programs are national, but basically universities yeah, will have a summer program. Great. They, like, they like that. It's people to people stuff. You see, anything that's working with and through people and animals is stuff they like. Um, after including, that, I have teaching experience. Horses. But the extras are not going to be critical in your case. You've got great statistics, you've got a lousy resume as written. 
it has the potential of being redone as someone who is an internal consultant at the AAA and wants to transition into being a general consultant. And you're the kind of person who could get that job with your actuarial background. So schools will like you. They'll particularly like the fact that you're a STEM woman with a 3.7 and high GRE scores. So make it real simple and real easy. Uh, and you've taken these intro, you know how to program and stuff like that. That, you know, the, the, the masters in math is a big plus here. Yeah, they're, they're intimidated by that. Uh, and then I'm just, intimidated by it. Yeah, me too. I still like people. <laughs> well, good. Uh, okay, so, man, uh, let me, did you put Wharton as a target school? What are your target schools? Chicago Booth, Kellogg, Ross, and then there's uh, IE in Spain because of her interest in Spanish. And it's what a good job, school. Yeah. What, what job do you, do you want to, okay, let's do with the IE thing. It's a maybe. Yeah, I, I take a strong line on this, so don't let me talk you out of it if you love it. I'm really in favor of going to business school in the United States, particularly if you want to work if you go to business school in Europe, you'll, it is very, very hard to get a first job back in the USA. That, that's my only wisdom on that. Well, thank you for being honest. Yeah, if well, you wanted, to work, no, if you wanted to work in Spain, it's different, but. Yeah, you know. yeah. If you want to get a job with McKinsey, Bain, or BCG, go to the best school you can in the US. I'd also apply to Wharton. You got you don't your, think Wharton would be a reach? It would be a reach, but... I'm not sure because your GREs are above the Wharton averages. Well, and, it's a reach uh, because... In the, not, in the latest class... Let me make it real up, clear here. Let, let me... I don't cut to the chase. I never leave the chase, okay? <laughs> Her, Victoria, your problem is your work history is not a bunch of selective jobs. Yeah. That's, that's it in a nutshell. So the business schools go, huh? We don't, we don't usually see people. Have anyone, has anyone from your groups at the AAA applied to business school? No. Most well, of them are going to pursue a fellowship with the Casualty Actual Society and want to stay in insurance, whereas I want to branch out. Yeah. Right. Insurance, yeah. We've been, been through this too. Insurance is a dirty word. <laughs> but nobody wants insurance. So, Sandy, so, what are Victoria's odds at Chicago Booth? With her odds everywhere are pretty strong, but she needs to execute along the lines we've just discussed. She's got to get out of this actuarial. She's got to transition from specialized consulting into generalized consulting and present herself that way. And she's got some splaining to do about why she worked for the AAA in the first place. What was your first job out of college? Uh, right out of college, I, well, I had an internship and was working for a medical management company in their finance group, business intelligence. And I declined a job to live in Spain for about two years, I was deciding whether I wanted to go to law school or pursue Spanish or math. I knew I wanted to work internationally, but to me, all of those are analytical. All right, get all those, get all those decisions behind you. Bus yeah. Business school admissions committee, they don't, they don't like decisions, they don't like choice. That's what they gotta do. They want people who've been pretty clear about what they're doing since they were born, even if they were clear about making a transition. They'll buy, they'll say, I started out thinking, uh, I, I, you know, I wanted to be in the medical device business. And then I discovered I was interested in specialized consulting. They'll buy that. They don't like a whole bunch of background decisions about liberal arts, Spanish, thought I'd work in Spain. They don't want to hear anything about it. Victoria, are you a first-generation college uh, graduate? 
Yeah, I am on one side. It's kind of an unusual situation. So on my mother's side, I'm the first person to go to college, but my father is an MD. They were divorced. So I grew up with um, the uneducated side of my family for the most part, but I do have my father who's highly educated. Right. Yes, I hope so. Uh, You're you're not going to get... Yeah, yeah, the, I, I don't see how that plays. I mean, sure, if, you know, we, we spent 20 hours putting together a life story, we could use that as an influence, but, but there's we, no don't time have, for that. we don't have to go that far. You've got a real straight story. You went to yeah, college. But, but Sandy, to the extent that she grew up in a single uh, parent household, um, uneducated, Maybe you make the oh, argument she made the college, college choice. Didn't have a college degree. Yeah, maybe you make the choice. You, you 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 explain the college choices and the job that way. Good point. Yeah, that that is a good point. I, you know. Yeah, I sit I sit corrected here, John. Good point. That could explain why you went to. Um, well, University of South Swanee. It's an okay school, man. Yeah. It's not like you started at community college. Right. That's a totally okay school, even though we don't see it much. Do you, John? No, really. So, so uh, meaning in elite MBA applications only. Right. So um, 30% at Booth and Kellogg, what do you think? Oh, no, it's much higher than that with proper execution. It's more wow. like if you get your game face on and you do the story along the lines we've been talking about, you're a woman in STEM, you're interested in uh, transitioning to general consulting, your possible goal is to combine your general consulting and um, analytics background into being a consultant, you know, who uses big data, yada, yada, yada. Man, that's a real sweet spot story. If you can and, execute it. and so Ross, forty percent, fifty percent. Yeah, no, Ross. She should get in if she can convince them she wants to go. Yeah, exactly. So go visit and make friends and. Yeah, I've been. I'll go again in September. Yeah, That's good. And, and in your application, say I've got a lot of friends at Ross, and I spoke to them, and they they've told me that it's great. So have you been? Have you visited Chicago Booth or Kellogg? I have actually the last two weekends I've been in Chicago. Um, I I have not explored Kellogg yet, but I've sat in. Kellogg, on you Kellogg is you're, you're a Kellogg. Kellogg likes people like you because you're a humanist who can do math. I would uh, Kellogg is your best bet at the gold. Wharton is a reach. Booth is smaller. They're they're sometimes picky. They may go not our kind of you know, female STEM, uh, the, the slots are smaller and fewer. Kellogg is what you should be focused on and you'd, you'd enjoy it there. Yeah, you'd love it. You really would. And, and look, you're a great candidate. Um, we both think you're going to get it. you got to get your game face on. you got to throw this resume out. Yeah, get take the lingo me. out of it. You're okay. leveraging data analytics uh, in a sort of consulting role in, a, in an interesting organization at, at the company's headquarters, and you want to leverage that with an MBA into a, a mainstream management consulting job. Thank you. Roger that. <laughs> well, good luck to you, and thank you, Sandy. And okay, for all of you out there, uh, good luck on the trail to business school. Thanks Adios. for watching. Thank you to both of you. Vaya Scandias. Bye bye. Take care.